Welcome at the 14th Big C Southeast Asia Conference, which was normally held in Singapore, but for the first time uh, it was held in Bangkok, uh, the 16th until 18 November 2016. So this presentation focuses on the security and performance in nationwide broadband networks, NBN, with the focus on wireless networks. So my name is uh, Ronald uh, van Kleunen. I'm the CEO of uh, Globron Private Limited in Singapore. I um, also indicated my security uh, certifications like CISM, Certified Information Security Manager, CISSP, Certified Information System Security Professional, the GIAC certifications uh, in mobility and in incident handling, the BIXI certifications, uh, wireless certifications like Certified Wireless Security Professional, IT service management, which relates to the security field, and also the um, ISO, ISC certifications, and in particular the 27001 ISMS uh, Information Security Management System. Now, it is important to have certifications in uh, at least the Asia-Pacific region. If you do security projects at the government level or with the military, um, so that you actually speak the same language uh, to the end users and that you really understand security end-to-end uh, -end because there are many domains you need to um, comply to. The, in the security domain there are actually 14 um, with a lot of uh, rules and regulations. And cybersecurity is becoming more and more important. So um, it is important that you keep up to date on the, the latest security trends. Now this is the agenda. So we're going to look into the wireless network trends for governments and telcos in Asia, emerging standards for governing large-scale wireless networks, wireless deployment lessons learned from case studies, security and performance in nationwide broadband networks. If you look into the ICT, the information communication technology, into the uh, infrastructure network trends, then you'll see that actually the wireless users and the IoT, the Internet of Things uh, type of devices coming into the market, they will grow rapidly. And that is going actually to drive uh, the wireless infrastructures. And that ranges from cellular and mobile type of networks, but also Wi-Fi uh, networks and other type of technologies like LoRa, Long Range, uh, Zigbee, Wison and so forth. Now those wireless um, access infrastructures, they still rely on the, on the cabling because a lot of cabling is needed, a lot of capacity is needed in the, in the back end to forward all those wireless traffic um, to the data center. So now we also need to see if those data centers have enough uh, capacity to store all those type of applications people are using on their uh, mobile devices or if it is uh, M2M machine-to-machine -machine communication that it need to be uh, processed accordingly in those data centers uh, as well and looking into the security aspects. Now the data center parks uh, they grow in country also because of the regulations so um, that's basically a worldwide trend and um, in the country uh, those data centers will grow because in some countries it's not allowed to um, store the information outside um, the country. So you can think about uh, email services, uh, social network type of services, and so forth. Now, nowadays, um, if you make use of an application, you actually have no clue where your data is stored. So maybe um, you use an email application, but uh, the hosting server is in uh, the US. So um, for security aspects and uh, law enforcement, um, regulations come in place by certain countries to store everything in country. The capacity of those data centers is important, but if your information is not stored locally in the data center and maybe stored in a data center uh, overseas in another uh, country or other continent, it's also important to look um, into those links which are connecting those different data centers and telecom communication systems. Now here is an example of the highest capacity under sea cable ever built by uh, Google and it has a capacity of 60 terabits per second. Now some of the countries uh, are landlocked uh, that means they're not even connected uh, to the sea. Uh, so those countries actually depend on other countries capacity to uh, transmit those data to those uh, data centers in other areas. Now, emerging standards for governing large-scale wireless networks, 
So you can, for example, look into the International Telecommunication Union, the ITU, the Broadband Regulation and Policy in APEC in Asia Pacific. So that was launched 15 of November 2016, just before the Big C conference. Uh, was also launched in Bangkok in uh, Thailand. And it's a very interesting uh, paper to understand uh, the growth and the demand of faster broadband deployments in the, in the region over here. So as you maybe know that uh, one fourth of the population, the world population, lives in the Asia Pacific region. Emerging standards for governing large scale wireless networks is also important. So you have to look into the net uh, neutrality as an example. Uh, what does that mean? Um, maybe I've heard about OTT before, which is called uh, over the top. And that means that um, some infrastructure providers, like, like telcos um, provisioning a whole uh, fixed wired network and wireless network, that we have other service providers running on top of those services. Now, um, if the telco themselves provides uh, certain services, maybe like emails or video services and so on, it might be that those telcos actually start to squeeze the bandwidth to the other service providers or maybe reroute the traffic first to their own uh, services before routing it to uh, the other services running on top of their networks. Now to avoid that, um, at the government level, uh, some regulations need to be uh, put into uh, place. Uh, so we call it actually net neutrality. And the Netherlands is one of the first uh, governments or counties where they implemented this type of uh, government policy. Now another growing trend um, is uh, smart city. Um, so uh, Dubai is one of the first uh, countries who um, adopted the ITU's key performance indicators. Okay, because what is actually a smart uh, city? So we have to do some um, measurements, um, what you will supply in the city to call it a smart city. Um, Barcelona is also one of those uh, cities which is promoting to the outside world and having a smart city expos um, going on in the country to explain uh, to the world from yeah, what is actually a smart city. Singapore uh, is also adopting uh, those ITU key performance indicators. Now focusing on security, um, the International Standard Organization has a uh, standard uh, ISO IEC 27001 and that is known as the Information Security Management Standard or ISMS. And here you see for the different regions like USA, Europe and APEC that in all those regions there is an uh, exponential trend by organizations adopting this um, information security management standard. Now why is that important? It is actually an, an security management framework so that an organization can implement that in, in, in the organization throughout all the different uh, departments. So that means at management level, the human resource department, the IT department, uh, legal, operations and so on. Um, so it is actually kind of an, an structured framework. Now it doesn't mean once you implement this framework that you're 100% secured. Okay, so it is just an, a structure to implement how do you manage security uh, 24 times 7 in the organization. Now to be able uh, to do that we need to look into skilled uh, wireless professionals if you're going to focus on the wider security aspects. Okay, so here you see different type of disciplines and basically for, from the sales professional via the architect, the installers, the auditors, the service support personnel, um, they actually need to be trained to understand um, first how does actually wireless work and that can be from a cellular mobile perspective or a Wi-Fi perspective but then also understand the security components so once you're going to design an, a wireless network that you take that into account. If you don't take the security components into account then later on that can um, increase actually the installation cost, the operational cost um, in the organization. Now international organizations need to be involved. So we mentioned already the um, ISO organization, the International Organization for Standardization, which typically works together with the IAC, the International Electrotechnical Commission. Um, ITU is an important player as well, the International Telecommunication Union, who works together with governments, guides the governments and the telco regulators. The Wireless uh, Broadband Alliance, the IEEE, who creates standards for Wi-Fi, for example, like 802.11, but also standards for cabling, like 802.3. Uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance, um, who works together with different product vendors, so, so that we have interoperability between Wi-Fi devices. The Internet Engineering Task Force, for 
for other standards related to security as well, uh, for authentication frameworks, for example. 3GPP for cellular and mobile type of networks. Bixi for the data center standards, the cabling, but also for wireless standards. Uh, the EIE and the TIE also related to cabling standards uh, and so on. And there are, of course, more organizations uh, involved. Um, and that is important to see how, how do we combine all those different standards together um, to create, in the end, good services um, which have a good performance, but those services also need to be secured. And sometimes the security can have an impact on the service availability levels and the service uh, performance levels we provide to our customers. Now, also new industries get involved in wireless services. Okay, and basically, it is every vertical market. So, um, legal and law enforcement need to be included. So, for example, if uh, a hacker sits on your wireless network and compromises certain uh, services um, over this wireless network, um, how do we create actually evidence uh, so that we actually can get the law enforcement involved um, to prosecute those hackers? We need to work together with the building construction authorities, so like civil engineering. How can we actually pre-plan or prepare a very good wireless network before the building has been ever built? Okay, and the, the reason for that is that it actually saves on your installation cost. Okay, because a lot of cabling is going into those buildings, but um, we don't want that the cabling um, installer or the cabling designer is going to design your wireless network because all those cables get terminated at a certain location. And what uh, you currently see in some locations is that all the access points are around that cable um, termination point. And that's actually maybe not the right location to, pro to provide those wireless services in that building. So we need to work together with those um, different industries. Now, there are also many other authorities uh, involved for all the different vertical markets. Uh, that can be in the healthcare sector, the financial sector, the manufacturing sector. And each of those vertical markets have actually their own kind of um, regulations, uh, best business practices. And, and that's important to, to see if those wireless networks meet those um, uh, requirements in those vertical markets as well. So governance, standardization and certification is important. So from a governance perspective, um, we need to establish a strategic direction. Okay, so the government for those different vertical markets need to be involved and um, actually mandate uh, to the vertical uh, markets and those industries from we need to have skilled professionals in place who know how to install uh, wireless networks. Also, they need to have the security qualifications to understand that security has been implemented properly in those uh, vertical industries. So to ensure the compliance with policies, standards and procedures and execute the strategy and manage also the risks. So in the security domain, you have to uh, manage uh, uh, security risks. And uh, there are different ways how to do that. Like you need to look into the assets. Basically, you need to look in every little component which makes or breaks your wireless service. And you need to do a an, an, an security risk assessment to all those different components to see what if something happened to that little component? Is my service still up and running? Does it impact the performance or not? And how do we mitigate uh, those risks? I always take an example, like let's say you have an access point uh, hanging on the wall uh, at your uh, organization. There is a risk that someone takes that access point away or steals the antennas. So how do you protect this type of uh, um, access point? So that's an example of uh, physical security. Now you can, have an, um, you can create a box which you put over those access points. Uh, but if the box costs uh, 300 US dollar and that access point only costs 20 US dollar, then it doesn't um, justify uh, the cost to install that security uh, solution. So that is one of those uh, examples. And there are many, many more for all the different security domains. So standardization is important. I mentioned already, I think that the ISMS, the Information Security Management Standard, is a good framework, uh, internationally accepted. But we need to focus on the wireless uh, components, and I will come back to that later. Certified professionals is important, not only on those wireless um, aspect, because security is such a big domain that you also need to understand um, how does the um, uh, service get secured end-to-end -end from the wireless or the mobile device all the way back to the data center. 
And uh, auditors are required, um, typically that need to be external parties, that cannot be the parties who install um, and implement and design those wireless networks, but um, another uh, organization or other um, type of professional need to validate if that service you have implemented at the customer site or for a government um, is secured end to end. So wireless deployment uh, lessons learned from case studies, the issues outdoor, now that's also important from a security perspective, where do you actually mount those access points? Now here is actually a an, um, an wireless network implemented in a uh, public uh, area for uh, CCTV monitoring, uh, cameras, so video surveillance. And there are actually um, two access points um, in this picture, but uh, it is very hard to find and try to see where they are uh, mounted, all in between those cables. And that also has an impact on the wireless service uh, availability. Um, so here are those uh, two access points uh, mounted uh, next to the pole. Now the good news is that the um, um, electricity authority has started a project to move all those cables uh, underground. But you can imagine that's a lot of work. Um, so the electricity cables need to be underground, uh, the fiber optic cable need to be underground, and those access points also need to go somewhere. So I hope they don't go underground as well, but we need to mount them and move them to other um, locations, maybe on the traffic light poles, for example. Um, here are some other issues in outdoor environments. Um, on the left side, we see some uh, NEMA enclosure or we call it sometimes IP rated enclosures to protect uh, equipment against rain, dust, sunshine uh, and so on or snow. Um, but here there are um, two indoor access points mounted in that, um, in that box. Um, there is no uh, normal airflow, so if the temperature raises uh, to 40 degrees Celsius or higher, then that equipment starts to um, reboot. So actually we need to have um, wireless access points with a heat sink uh, on top of it, so that actually the heat can uh, be moved away from those um, devices. But it is also the other way around. Uh, we have some uh, extreme temperatures, maybe in, um, in, in uh, freezing cells or um, areas where we uh, store food, for example. And here we see an example where the uh, antennas <laughs> has been uh, installed in this, uh, in this storage um, environment and you see all the frost on top of the antennas impacting the performance as well. Other issues here, you see on the left side an access point in a uh, so-called NEMA enclosure, we can also call it a plastic bag. Uh, that's actually not a professional way of um, installing indoor access points in an outdoor environment. Maybe it's a good temporary solution to test if that access point is working in that environment, but in the end it needs to be mounted uh, properly. On the right side, uh, we see also a NEMA enclosure, which is used in an indoor environment. And you see two antennas poking out through the holes. That is actually not the purpose of that NEMA enclosure. But here the NEMA enclosure is actually used for security reasons, that people don't steal that access point. Other issues um, on the left side, uh, do we have interference or not? It really depends how the access point has been configured. Maybe one access point is on 2.4 GHz, the other one on 5 GHz. But maybe the polarization of the antennas is not done correctly because those access points maybe should be mounted uh, on the ceiling. So you also need to understand from how is the RF propagation of those uh, access points. On the right side, we have the so-called Cates of Faraday. So also for security reasons, people don't want uh, that those access points get stolen. And they created the metal Cates of Faraday around it, which means that the RF propagation goes in all different directions, or maybe the RF that doesn't get out at all. Here we have the hanging coffin on the left side. Um, that's also not a proper way to install your uh, access point, uh, particularly not for a uh, ceiling mounted access point. But um, if you look carefully, we see there is another Ethernet port available to, uh, to add another access point if you want. On the right side, we have a bird breeding on an access point. So an access point has been thrown uh, behind a television screen and it becomes so hot that the bird is sitting uh, on top of it. There are many other challenges to the design and deploy wireless networks. Um, so it's not only the physical um, installation, uh, which need to be done properly, but also we need to look into the logical configurations. Now a very simple uh, issue is already the channel planning. So in the 2.4 gigahertz, like the screenshots you see here, um, 
we can have a lot of overlap. Uh, you see all those access points are basically interfering with each other. We call that adjacent channel interference. And that actually needs to be segmented um, uh, from each other. So it is actually better to have all those access points on channel 1, channel 6 and channel 11. Um, so that they can actually hear uh, their transmissions and uh, work together in the so-called uh, coordination function. Um, for some networks we actually move away from 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz um, but it is still important to look into the channel mapping and also into the transmit um, power of those access points. RF coverage planning outdoor and indoor is important. Okay, so we can uh, make use of tools which can create so-called heat maps. Uh, with those heat maps you can see how far does actually the RF propagate uh, in the buildings or if you're within the building already and uh, you can actually plot it on a floor plan and to see how far those access points actually propagate our uh, RF signals and to determine if there are some uh, black spots or areas where the RF doesn't propagate properly. Um, it's also important to look uh, from a capacity perspective to see how close do the clients need to be to those access points to have a proper uh, performance. Now from a security perspective, um, it is important to see how far do those signals leak out the building because maybe you don't even want that those signals um, leak to the parking lot because there could be a hacker sitting there and trying to extract information over this wireless network and try to find uh, company confidential information. Here is an example of the 5 gigahertz. Um, it's one of the first sites I ever saw where all the 5 gigahertz uh, channels have been utilized. Um, there are many access points installed um, closely uh, together. You can actually see that at the check-in uh, counters there is almost an access point at every row. Um, but a lot of access points have been deployed in this particular airport. And um, there are overlapping channels uh, up to 80 megahertz in the 5 gigahertz band uh, as well. Um, it is actually a good example where also cable termination points are limiting the position of the access points and there are just too many access points and also um, those networks are used because a lot of mobile devices have now a 5 gigahertz um, chip uh, built in so they really connect to those uh, networks. Now if you want to know uh, more about this you can actually download this uh, white paper which uh, talks about the HDMCII which stands for the high density uh, moving clients induced interference and that's becoming um, I think an, a bigger problem in uh, other locations as well because of this exponential growth of uh, Wi-Fi devices and uh, Internet of Things. It's also important to have better installations and designs. So this is an, an, a market area in, in Bangkok and you see um, there's only one pole and they mounted all type of different services on this uh, pole the public announcement systems, the mobile and cellular, and the Wi-Fi uh, as well. So, how can actually uh, the wireless industry help customers, help governments to create better designs? Or actually achieve better wireless service management and wireless security management? Um, if I see this type of pictures, I ask myself, who is actually accountable? Are the vendors accountable for this? Because maybe they don't train their uh, channel partners accordingly to uh, do proper installations. Are it the system integrators themselves who should be accountable for this type of installations? Are it the governments allowing this type of uh, installations in their, in their country? Or is it the end user not knowing enough about how wireless networks need to be installed to create this kind of situations? So I call that Design Reflects Society. Now, because of those uh, wireless trends, we also have in those um, uh, cities um, an kind of an issue that we have to deal with high density. So we have wireless cities, millions of people, all different type of wireless devices get deployed in those cities. And that are very dense areas like apartment blocks, hotels, houses. And their RF or their wireless uh, devices, they leak in each other's uh, building as well. Um, there are also 24 hours uh, people are on the street. We call it moving crowd. Um, a lot of businesses are done outdoors, um, people uh, go to coffee shops, um, 
want to make use of wireless networks and there's just a lot of um, RF activity in the outdoor environments. So it is actually one big Wi-Fi zone but also one big cellular and mobile zone and um, that's kind of challenging because there's no channel coordination between the internet service providers and it, I don't think it's even possible because um, you have to deal with public um, Wi-Fi networks and then you have to deal with the private networks uh, within those hotels and uh, hospitals for example and how do we actually manage all those people who are installing their own access points in their apartment um, I'm not going to talk to my neighbor to uh, ask him please can you change to another uh, channel in uh, the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz so I don't think there is enough uh, spectrum available and it is also an unlicensed spectrum so there are other kind of services coming into the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz so maybe there is not enough uh, spectrum available but will it ever be because um, we are bandwidth hungry the moment we want to make use of services and it's moving into video type of services over wireless networks that requires more bandwidth and more spectrum as well so security and performance in nationwide broadband networks um, it's quite um, uh, challenging because now we need to see at public networks uh, as well in outdoor environments or at airports uh, to see how does it impact um, the performance now the performance is um, we need to um, secure our data so that means we need to encrypt and we need to decrypt uh, the data from the mobile device all the way uh, to the data center or where actually the information can be uh, securely processed and that of course can have an impact on your um, communication and you really need to look end to end to all the different devices your mobile device the wireless access points the switches the routers the firewalls um, and all the other devices involved which makes or breaks a um, wireless service to see how well is that secured how is the encryption done how is the processing done at which always i layer is the processing done because it has all an impact on the performance of your wireless communication furthermore we need to look into um, the law as well so here is an example um, this happened a long time ago in 2006 in Singapore there's the Telecommunication Act and the Computer Misuse Act and you can see uh, the fines here up to 50,000 Singapore dollar in fines or penalties up to 10,000 uh, Singapore dollar now you can actually google it there were actually three uh, cases where uh, people got charged of uh, misusing uh, the wireless uh, network and that was also around the time we actually talked to the government to see um, yeah but wait a minute um, if you have an, a public um, access point or maybe uh, someone is having an access point at home and it is actually uh, still using kind of default uh, values or there's no proper authentication mechanism in place someone can actually spoof that access point we call that the evil twin so the access point from a wireless perspective looks exactly the same as the as the real access point so how do end users actually get um, educated and actually protected because maybe they don't know that they connected to that other access points okay so after that um, um, we actually got some government uh, incentives um, to improve the skill sets in country um, according to the national info com uh, competency framework um, to actually to improve uh, skill levels in country educate system integrators and improve the security Governance, standardization, and certification. So we need to have some uh, systems in place which are linked to the wireless services. So uh, our view is that uh, we need to have a wireless service management system in place or standard, the WSMS. Uh, that um, is not only Wi-Fi, but it also should include mobile and cellular and all the other type of services coming into the market. Uh, because wireless is uh, for indoor and outdoor services it becomes mission uh, sometimes business critical and that needs to be uh, implemented uh, correctly so we need to start already with the very basic issues like we saw earlier already uh, like installation issues uh, that need to be uh, solved as soon as possible to improve the wireless services to the end users now furthermore we need to glue the security layer in those um, uh, service management systems as well so that should be actually aligned with the ISO 27001 um, which is the wireless service security management uh, standard WSSMS where also the standards need to be auditable 
okay so that someone can actually validate that um, the, the service which has been installed is secure properly so together we need to get better quality wireless networks for mission and business critical services now if you want to know uh, more about that wireless service management uh, standard or system and how to audit them um, uh, that system is aligned with the IT service management standard the uh, 20,000 uh, standard of ISO IAC and um, similar for the wireless security management uh, standard and how to audit them for the ISMS the information security management system and the 27001 standard you can actually go to those uh, two links at item 1 and item 2 to find more about that so standardization is needed for um, the design but actually before the design standardization is also needed from how do we gather the requirements of the customers before we can do the design uh, we need to do the analysis of um, those wireless network security and um, need to be implemented and of course those need to be audited from an end-to-end -end service perspective and security management perspective so maybe we need to look into an accreditation body for wireless services and technology which covers cellular mobile wi-fi zigbee lora wystan and so on also big c is working on standards so they have standards already um, at data center level and some of the governments have adopted those uh, big c standards uh, they have similar standards for cabling standards um, uh, so that people who do the installation of the cabling uh, really know what they are doing and it's particularly important for data cabling and electricity cabling uh, but similar for wireless okay so in progress there is a big c standard under the wireless subcommittee uh, which is a focus um, on wireless local area network wln system design and implementation best practices uh, the initial release is focused on a smaller footprint like 10,000 square feet or 1,000 square meter and basic applications running on that network like email and web browsing in office environments okay so this standard is not covering really in-depth the nitty-gritty uh, wi-fi aspects how to uh, really get all the requirements the design the analysis what kind of tools you need to use because um, that is really really a specific skill and that requires a lot of knowledge um, uh, on the Wi-Fi um, areas to, to really understand how uh, Wi-Fi works in detail, how the protocol works, the spectrum, how that works, and how the communication works end-to-end. -end. So the 15th Big C Southeast Asia Conference uh, will be held in 2017 from the 15 until 17 November, again in Bangkok in Thailand. But there are many other Big C conferences uh, globally. So uh, there are two conferences coming up in the US, in uh, Orlando and Las Vegas, um, in Canada, in Latin America, in Africa, in Nigeria and South Africa, in the Middle East and Africa, in Dubai, in uh, North Asia, in Japan, Korea, and Southeast Asia, in Thailand for uh, the region and then in the Philippines and in the South Pacific, in Australia and New Zealand. So please visit uh, the BigC.org uh, website for more details about those conferences. So with that, um, I hope you enjoyed the security and performance in nationwide broadband networks with the focus on wireless networks. And I look forward uh, to meet you at one of the upcoming uh, BigC conferences.